At the expiration of a two-week deadline, the meeting of the People's Democratic Party, PDP Zoning Committee, ended inconclusively in Abuja on Tuesday. The PDP is yet to reach a decision of where the presidential candidate for 2023 will come from. The 37-member Zoning Committee of the People's Democratic Party, under the chairmanship of Benue State Governor Samuel Otom, has scheduled another meeting next week, same time, same venue. While former PDP Vice President Inze Fidelis Ozichuku, who is a member of the committee, wants the committee to zone the ticket to the southeast. In the spirit of equity and fairness, some members of the party want the ticket to be thrown open to the six geopolitical zones. However, the committee in a statement assured members that they could come out with an acceptable position for all. Joining us to discuss the inconclusiveness of zoning by the PDP 37-member zoning committee is Dr. Okwesilieze Nwodo, former governor of Enugu State and former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Good morning, Dr. Nwodo, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ruben, and good morning. Well, is there still any hope that the uh, party, PDP, your party, will be able to reach a, an acceptable consensus, as has been promised, on the question of zoning with regard to the presidential uh, election of 2023? Yes, Ruben. Um, you know, we have a lot of hope as long as we are following the due process of the People's Democratic Party. Now, what we do in our party, almost every, um, every four years, is to set up a committee like we have done now. And that committee goes into discussion, they come up with uh, their recommendations. These recommendations will now go to the Board of Trustees of the party. In fact, the first bus stop of that recommendation is to the National Working Committee. They will look at it and then do a memo to the um, caucus of the party. The caucus of the party will debate on that report, following which the amendments they have made will now come up to the, um, the, co the caucus of the party. Following that, the, the report will go to the Board of Trustees. And after the Board of Trustees, it comes to NEC. Now, all these other organs are advisory. The decision-making body is the National Executive Committee. The uh, import of all of this is that at the end of the day, we now have a sufficient debate and input. And we are likely to achieve two things. One, a consensus, and two, those whose views have not been carried are satisfied that their views have been taken on board in arriving at the final consensus that the party will decide at the National Executive Committee meeting. When they have done that, it makes it easy for people whose views have not been accepted to take it because they have expressed themselves fully. And then the people whose views have been carried know that it was as a result of superior arguments and also 
in the interest of the party in order to win the election. Yes, that is the process we are going through right now. Right. Thank you, sir. It, it is important that everybody feels that they were heard. But what do you make of the arguments for zoning and the arguments against zoning? Those arguments for zoning are also split. Some people are in favor of zoning to the southeast because the southeast, as you very well know, hasn't had a bite of the cherry. Other people say no, it's the turn of the north because when you look at the Fourth Republic and the north only got just over two years under President Omaru Yaradua before his untimely passing. So they feel that it should go to the north. And there's some who are against zoning and feel that the race should be thrown open. Where do you stand personally? Well, where I stand is that Nigeria didn't start in uh, 1998. Nigeria got independence in 1960. And since 1960, whether you were elected an executive president or whether you were a military dictator, both carried executive powers. And if you look at how these executive powers have emerged in our country, the southeast of Nigeria has enjoyed it for six months, and that was under uh, Aguyu Ironsi. Every other part of the country, when we talk of the current six geopolitical zones, have had a shot at ruling this country not less than two times. And therefore, that zone that has never had a shot at the presidency has a very strong case. Secondly, that zone has been accusing the Federation of monumental marginalization of its people. Not to talk about the Civil War. We are heading to 60 years after the Civil War, and we have not been given any opportunity to stand at the commanding heights of governance in our country. Now, in the past seven years, the marginalization has reached monumental level. Every appointment that the federal government pronounces is likely going to be outside the southeast of Nigeria. Every intervention of the federal government, whether it's in welfareism, whether it's in infrastructure, it will, whatever you call it, southeast comes at the bottom of the six geopolitical zones we are asking the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now and again, what is the crime of the people of the Southeast? Why this permanent marginalization? Why is it that any time that something good is coming to the Southeast, reasons are manufactured why it must not go there? We in the Southeast, we feel extremely despondent we feel that we are not part of the Federation. We feel that the Civil War has not ended. It's because of this that our people are agitating passionately, putting their patriotism, putting their capacity and competence, putting their love for our country at the forefront, to be given a chance to bring the, on the table the vast talents that the Almighty God has bestowed on our people for the benefit of our country. I believe that if the talents in the Southeast are put on the table, this country will go far. To so continue to deny those talents has not benefited our country and will not benefit our country going forward. That's why we are making this repeated appeal at every opportunity we get, that the political parties going for this election should choose their candidates from the Southeast. Other zones of Nigeria, they have their arguments. But at the end of the day, when you want a superior argument to win, then you allow it to win. There is no, there is no rationale to jettison the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the rotation that we have in the country 
You don't change the goalposts at the middle of the game. We have all agreed across political boundaries to zone the presidency of Nigeria between the North and the South. There is a rotation in place. It's been working for us. Why do we want to truncate it at this time? And if it comes to Southern Nigeria, we have recently had eight years of President Obasanjo and six years of Osibanjo as Vice President. Does it give moral justice, equity, and fair play for the Southwest to take it again? And the South South has had six years of Jonathan's presidency. Is it fair that we go back to the South South? The only equity, the only justice, the only fairness, the only thing that will bring unity, peace, and to Nigeria is to go to the Southeast. I don't think we can say it any better than this, because it's, it's an argument that is self-explanatory. It is a truth that cannot be controverted. It is, a, it is something that its time has come in order to reunite our country, in order to give every part of this country and every citizen of this country hope, necessary hope, important hope, Okay. That we all belong to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, okay. and we can all aspire to lead it and serve it. Okay. I'd like to you ask say, you this. Yeah. Okay, Ruben. Sorry. I'd like to ask you this, sir. If yes, Elijah Tikwa Obaka didn't, you know, put forward his aspiration to run, do you think this talk about South South zoning North and South will come up? Because a lot of people thought that this talk about power coming to the South was a fair complete already before the intention of Elijah Chiku Abuaka. What's your take on that? Well, he seems to be the first uh, uh, northerner that threw his heart into the race. But those of us who are his close friends, who have had personal meetings with him, who have tried to persuade him. The Southeast, the Southeast and the South South have been his strongest political stronghold in most of his political outings. And indeed, he has chosen his vice presidential candidates the last two times he was on the race from the Southeast. I've worked as his uh, director for finance and administration when we were in ANC, we have given him massive support. In the last election, we actually gave him 95% of the votes in the Southeast. It was because certain people had promised Buhari that they were going to give him 25%, that they were trying to steal articles votes in the Southeast so that they, he would get a spread by getting 25% in some of the states. This was massively resisted across the Southeast. So we have appealed to him. This is payback time for us. We expect that if our candidate wins that nomination, one of the first people that will throw their hearts to support our candidate from the Southeast will be Atiku Abubakar, because we have that understanding with him, that we have paid our dues for him, and it's time for him to pay for us. Okay, the same argument that came up at the uh, meeting in Abuja that has now been rescheduled are the same old arguments with Northerners who are saying throw the uh, race open to anybody from any of the six geopolitical zones. Simply, they're saying that the North, on the platform of the PDP, has only done two years of uh, President Umaru Yaradwa, whereas the South has done 13 years eight years of uh, President uh, uh, Obasanjo and five years of President uh, Jonathan. Some of them say 14 years. I don't know where they got the 14 years from. Because some people say, oh, President Jonathan spent five, uh, six years. No, he was president uh, for five years. So 
I mean, that argument is still being pushed. Uh, what are Sardana's doing to make it clear that that's not how to calculate uh, the rotation between north and south? And beyond that, what special risk does the PDP uh, run if it chooses its candidate from the north? Because I hear some people saying, well, if uh, the southeast does not agree, maybe the south-south will agree, and maybe the north can even... Uh, you know, bring the uh, significant number with more percentages from the south. That kind of uh, arithmetic. Do you think it will work? Well, first of all, I think that this argument is jaundiced, with all due respect. Why are we talking about president from PDP? Is there a country called PDP? We're talking about president of Nigeria. And we're talking about zoning and rotation between the north and the south in the presidency of Nigeria, in the executive management of this country, whether military or civilian. We're talking about Nigeria. Who has managed Nigeria since independence? Is it more in the south or is it more in the north? The answer is very obvious. And talking about north and south rotation, coming to the south that has been at the presidency for only six months, I mean the southeast that has tested the presidency or head of state, as Aguirre did for six months, why will that zone not be allowed to produce the presidency? Why? Because PDP, a country called PDP, had 14 years or 13 years as president. There is no country called PDP. No matter where the president comes. The, today, the president in, in, in APC is uh, from, from, from the south. And APC is zoning their presidency, uh, is from the north, and APC is zoning their presidency to the south. That makes more sense. That is in line with the agreement. That is in line with what we have decided to do since this republic. In order to make sure that the whole country is carried along. So let us not break this country into party. No. Anybody who succeeds is a Nigerian. And we preside over this country as a Nigerian and has to unite this country as a Nigerian. It has to carry every section of the country. So the only argument that is superior, makes sense, and is targeted to peace and unity in our country today is to go to the Southeast. That is the truth. Right, so you presented an argument that might convince Alaji Atiku Abubakar that it's payback time and he should support the Southeast. What argument would you present to the trio of former Senate President Bukola Saraki and Governors Bala Mohammed and Aminu Tambua who are also vying for PDP's presidential ticket? Let me start from my friend uh, Tambua. <laughs> Even if you are talking about elected presidents, we're talking about Shehu Shagari, we're talking about um, uh, our current presidents, we're talking about uh, um, uh, Yaradua, all these people are from the northeast, I mean, northwest. So we will we'll just uh, now say every time we need a president, let's go to northwest because the rest of the country have no material to rule the country. How do you think people will feel about this? How do you think people will feel about this? Right. Not is we'll say that they have only had Tafaw Balewa as elected head, head of state. Yes. But how many military presidents have they had? The same thing goes for the North Central. We have Bola, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, yes, Bukola Bukola Saraki. Saraki comes from. Uh, yes, you will say uh, uh, that they have not uh, had elected presidents. 
Yes, that may be true. But they have had so many military presidents. IBB, Abdul Salami, and who else? So, why must these people bring John this argument just because they want to run? They are blind to the fact that a section of the country has not been elected as president of Nigeria and only served six months as military head of state. They have had people who served eight years as military presidents. They have those who have served, who served four years, two years. I think that we should be a brother's keeper. I think we should say, do unto me as you, I mean, do to others as you would do, like to do unto yourselves. If what they are saying is fair, let them put themselves in the position of the Southeast and tell me how fair it is to be in that position. Okay. Okay. In a case where another candidate emerges, what will you do? Or what will become of the PDP? Will the Southeast... The PDP is going to shoot itself on the foot. Okay. Will the Southeast still it's support a Northern candidate the for the presidency? If a Northern candidate emerges from the PDP as presidential candidate, will the Southeast support? The Southeast, I tell you, and Ruben, I'm being... I'm, I'm just putting the facts on the table. As I'm speaking to you, I'm in Enugu now, so I know what's going on here. The ordinary man on the streets in, in the Southeast today uh, will not vote for any candidate that is not from the Southeast. And if they do, it is something that they will have to discuss with that candidate who offers them the best amelioration that will give them comfort in a federal republic of Nigeria. Because we are not going to secede, we are not going to run away from Nigeria, nobody is going to push us away. We will know that the country has taken a decision that will leave an indelible scar on the conscience of this nation, that will be very hard to heal. And that is not fair. That can be avoided. That is not necessary to add on to the war injuries and monumental marginalization the people of the South East have faced. Therefore, it is in the interest of good conscience, it is in the interest of fairness, brotherliness. We say in our national anthem before in brotherhood we stand. This is the time that we should stand in that brotherhood. And I think that nobody, nobody will lose anything if the presidency is zoned to the Southeast. Instead, the country has a lot to harvest from that. A lot of healing, a lot of peace, a lot of abandonment of agitations for secession from our country, a lot of comfort for the wounded and the traumatized parts of the country. A hope that any part of the country that suffers this quantum of marginalization, the country has a conscience to heal that wound and reunite whoever is hurt back to the fold of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And for us to continue to contribute our maximum to our country. There is no part of this country but patriotism is in short supply, not in the Southeast, who have sacrificed blood and tears, anger and sorrow. I believe that we can begin to heal our country. 2023 offers us a wonderful opportunity to heal the wounds of this country, to rise from the ashes of the Civil War 
marginalization, nepotism, sectionalism to a united Nigeria, strong and ready to take its rightful place in the Committee of Nations. Well, we've had a number of persons uh, from the PDP, from the South, indicating interest, and some of them particularly from the Southeast and South South. Uh, there is Mr. Peter B, uh, who says uh, he's interested. Uh, there is uh, Mr. Sam uh, who is also uh, a strong member of the PDP. And then you have uh, the governor of uh, River State, Yesom Wike, who says, in fact, the ticket belongs to him, because he's the one who has been sponsoring the party. When those who call themselves uh, founding fathers uh, left the party. What's your assessment of these uh, three major uh, persons who have uh, declared interest from the South on the platform of the PDP from the Southeast, South South? Well, to make a choice, who will you recommend? Again, on oh, the and there's uh, Senator Ayim Pius Ayim. Equity. Yes. There's also Senator yes. Pius Ayim. On the basis of. On the basis of justice, fairness, and equity, I believe that Governor Nisam Wike should not be on this race. I expect him, as a current politician, to know how much the Southeast has supported the South South politically, economically, and in everything that the South South is enjoying in the Federal Republic of Nigeria today. We have been right there at their back, fought with them, made sure they got 13%, made sure that they got all sorts of um, uh, patronages from the federal government in order to ameliorate the facts that the hand that lays the golden egg should be looked after. South East has been in the forefront of that fight. I expect collective, collective unity of the South-South in backing the Southeast at this time. Of the three candidates from the Southeast you mentioned, I believe Nigerians know them sufficiently well that if they cast their votes, whomever Nigerians want as the most preferred candidate, the South East will be comfortable with that. If it behoves on us that we should go with one candidate, we'll make an effort to get a consensus. Where that fails, let them go to the field and test their popularity and let Nigerians choose whom they think is best suited to govern them. All right, thank you, sir. What are your thoughts on the calls for Governor Autumn of Benue State to resign because of Governor Wike's um, donation of 200 million naira to the people of Benue State and obviously his declaration that he's running for president in Benue State. Those calls have been rejected by Governor Autumn and he says he's not compromised at all. But what's your take on that? Well, my sister, there are two things that politicians do. Politicians, like now, we have the disaster of the, pre, uh, the attack on the, on the, on the re, uh, railway line or the, or the train itself. A lot of politicians have come out to give succor to the wounded and uh, to help the families of those who lost their beloved ones. Uh, Governor, Governor um, um, Wike has been very magnanimous to the people of Benue State. When there was massacre there that they buried about 70 people, I think he's one of the most prominent politicians in Nigeria that went there and donated a lot of money and other things to help the families of those that were killed as well as those that were injured. So he's a friend of Benue State and he's always running to, their, uh, to, to assist them when they have crisis of that nature. Now, if, if the, the, the recent visit is to woo them to support uh, his presidential aspiration, I wouldn't condemn it because 
that's what most politicians will do. Uh, in Nigeria parlance, they say that when you go to ask people for a favor or to ask a big person for a favor, in my part of the country, you go with cola nuts, you go with palm wine. Then that makes your visit serious and your guests will sit up. I know that you came for a serious discussion. So if you presented cola nuts, uh, I gave it in the form of cash for them to buy drinks and, uh, and entertain themselves in order to woo them to support his uh, presidency. Uh, I think it, it's, it's fair. It's very unfair. I, I won't condemn that either. Okay. In all of this happening, you said something. You said if the presidency is given to the Southwest, it will bring peace, harmony, and it will also lead to a drop in agitations. So I ask you again, in the case where the presidency doesn't come to the southeast, is it that the agitations will continue? Let me answer this question by something that is like a question back to you, but let me just paint the scenario. Today, on Mondays, People can't go about their normal business in the Southeast. We have local governments, we have state governments, we have federal governments. We have all the military and paramilitary organizations. They are not able to give us cover in order to go about our daily business on Mondays. Because IPOB threatened that people should not come out on Mondays. Even when they have removed the threats, criminals have taken over every Monday to harass people. And that puts fear into the people. And the security agencies are not there to protect them. So the sit at home continues. Now, I want to ask, supposing the presidency comes to southern Nigeria and it doesn't come to the southeast, we have an eight-year presidency in southern Nigeria, not from the southeast. And it goes by rotation to the north for another eight years. And we expect the leaders of the southeast to hold the IPOB and those who support them in permanent check for 16 years. This is like giving us life snakes to carry in our hands. Our young people are so traumatized, they don't feel anything about Nigeria. Nigeria must reach out to these young people. We have said it repeatedly in Ohane Zendigo. Let the federal government listen to these young people and ameliorate their pains. You had agitation for resource control. President Yaradua reached out to the young people the militants of Niger Delta. We have peace there today. We are exporting our crude oil without any interference. Maybe if we had had a robust discussion with Boko Haram, it would not have lasted this long. Why can't we have a discussion in the Southeast to break this jinx of agitation? What are they agitating for? Is it something that is impossible for Nigeria to do in order for them to feel welcome and acceptable as Nigerians? What is impossible for this country to do for any citizen of Nigeria from any part of Nigeria to make him feel that he is in a country that cares? What do you want these young people to do? Nobody's listening to them. And then we, their leaders, are saying, give us a chance to rule the country. And then the country says they have no conscience to listen to our plea. And you go and hold back these people who feel traumatized and marginalized for another 16 years. And if you don't hold them back, we will come 
with Operation Python Dance day in, day out, until you are all slaughtered and wiped out from Nigeria. Is that fair? Is that the right way to go? I'm just painting a scenario that could emerge. Mm. So let us heal this injustice once and for all. And let us have peace across our country. Let's give development a chance. Let's give progress a chance. The rest of the black race is waiting for this country. And God has endowed it with sufficient manpower, sufficient natural resources to be the flag and pride of the black race all over the world. Why are we holding ourselves down? Why won't us let go? Why won't we allow all parts of this country to feel welcomed? to be able to give their best to their fatherland. Why must we hold some people down permanently? Is that fair? Is that the right way to go? But how pragmatic is this position taken by the South? Because from the conversation so far, it's very clear that some people in this country, they really don't care. They don't. They are not interested in any principle. They just want power for their own part of the country. Which then brings me to the case of uh, two prominent uh, uh, politicians of Igbo extraction who have just decided not to bother themselves about uh, politics uh, of uh, pre Nigerian presidency in 2023, who are planning to go back to the village. One, Senator Ike Ukuremado. He's been in the Senate five times. He's been deputy Senate president three times. You could say that you know, he has the credentials to say he too wants to be president of Nigeria, given his experience. But he's going back to Enugu. He says he wants to go and be a governor in Enugu State for 2023. The same thing with Baribe, Senator Enyinaya Baribe, minority leader of the PDP, who is also going back home to Abia, where he had been deputy governor before. And those who criticize these two gentlemen say, oh, they are taking a pragmatic option because they know that maybe Nigeria is not ready yet uh, to have an Igbo man as president. So it's better to just go back home and go and uh, join a race that is more realistic for them. What do you say to this? Well, I don't blame them because I have always said uh, our people are like a child that has been so traumatized, beaten up in tears and weeping on the floor. And Nigeria needs to raise her hand, bring up this child and comfort the child and say, my child, even if you have wronged, we are punished you enough, come back home. And I maintain that argument that if the political parties gave the impression that they were going to zone the presidency to the southeast, we'll be able to harvest more credible candidates from the southeast. And at that time, I named a couple of people, including the three people you have mentioned that uh, are running for presidency in the southeast. I mentioned Okonji Wala. I forgot that day to mention uh, Moalo. We, we, we have a lot of people who meet the criteria of the president of Nigeria today to solve the problems of Nigeria today. We have them, but they have not been encouraged. So these two gentlemen you have mentioned are capable of running Nigeria. Well, because they feel that there's no way we can win that nomination. So they go to try something else. Who loses at the end of the day? Nigeria. Well, beyond PDP and the zoning issue, which we'll see how that all pans out, what are the chances of PDP regaining power from APC in 2023 after eight years of APC rule? It's going to be quite an uphill task because it's hard. So, you know, unseat the incumbent, but it's been done before. So 
What are the odds this time? My dear, the odds this time are one, if the party is insensitive to the desires of Nigerians, is insensitive to fairness, justice, and equity, does not realize that today Nigeria needs PDP like oxygen. The level the APC has driven this country to the precipice. The country is waiting on PDP to give them a leadership that will halt them falling over at the precipice. And therefore, those of us in the leadership of the PDP, we must be extremely careful. We must conduct the exercise now on where to choose our presidential candidate from with all sense of fairness, justice, equity, humility, and foresight. We must give Nigeria a candidate that will rescue Nigeria. This country needs to be rescued. I don't have to go into details, but if you're a Nigerian living in Nigeria, or even if you're a Nigerian living abroad, and you're hearing news on social media, on, on normal media, about the happenings in Nigeria, you know that our country is in dire need of a rescue leader. And we're asking, the names we are mentioning on this program, and many others who have been encouraged, if justice is done, Nigeria can harvest a leader from the Southeast that can rescue Nigeria. So a lot of people will say PDP, and this is the world on the street. PDP, really? PDP that couldn't fix power in 16 years? PDP that couldn't fight insurgency? PDP that had a lot of, so many problems that the APC looked so fashionable and attractive in 2015? PDP that can't get its act together as regards doing the right thing and zoning to the Southeast or the South for a presidential candidate after hitherto agreements? PDP that has division within its own ranks? That's what the people of Nigeria are asking. Really? What would your answer be to them? My answer would be that the 16 years of PDP in the helm of affairs of Nigeria were golden years of the Fourth Republic. When we left government, all the statistics you are mentioning now, economy, security, unemployment, and so forth and so forth, you cannot compare it with what is happening today Six weeks of fuel shortage cannot be fixed. What has the country been able to fix? You cannot go to Kaduna from the capital of Nigeria, Abuja, by rail, by road, or by air. Look, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you just ask your crew, to go to the streets and interview Nigerians, you'll be shocked at how despondent and disappointed Nigerians are with APC government of the past eight years. Not one thing, not one thing has been fixed. Even the red, line, red lines that are boasting of, these red lines were awarded by PDP government and substantial money advanced for their construction. They just came to commission these projects. Which, which federal road, which federal road in Nigeria has been fixed by APC government and commissioned by the president in eight years? So comparing APC government and PDP government is like comparing darkness and light. 
There, there's, there's no basis at all. Well, on that note, we'd like to say thank you very much, Dr. Kwesilese Ngodo. I'm sure that the APC spokespersons and leaders are not likely to agree with you. They'll probably point to the second River Niger bridge that uh, the administration says it will commission before uh, 2023 general elections. So thank you very much all the same. Hey, PDP got the sovereign wealth bills to finance that project, you know? <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.